After Britain had colonized India, there were British-owned properties which were established in India with signboards that clearly read that no Indians or dogs were allowed onto those properties. Today, there are certain animal rights activists who say that the current exploitation of non-human animals is comparable and morally analogous to the exploitation of certain human beings in historical atrocities, such as during the colonization of India. So are these any morally different? Yes, not only are they morally different, they are morally opposite. And today I'd like to explain why. As a brief introduction, as you can probably tell by just looking at my face, I'm Indian. I don't think that matters. I think what is true is true regardless of who says it. But I do know that these things matter to some people. So there you have it, one of my sort of group identities, right? Anyway, with that cleared up, let's dive right into the video. Historically, oppressors have equated the human beings whom they were oppressing to certain non-human animals to justify or rather to excuse the oppression and the discrimination onto those human beings. I'll give you one more example. Former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill said that Indians breed it like rabbits, right? And he said that and he equated Indians to rabbits, right? And he used that as a justification or rather as an excuse to divert supplies from India to Britain to store as reserved stockpiles. And he did this while famine was raging in India. And this famine, right, was created as a consequence of previously having diverted supplies from India to Britain, again to store as reserve stockpiles. This led to a huge moral atrocity, right? In this famine, in this British-induced famine, right, created as a matter of Britain-British policy, three to four million Indians died. Right? Three to four million, think about that number. And the, the excuse that was given right, to carry out this moral atrocity was comparing Indians and equating Indians to animals. Right? Winston Churchill said that they breed like rabbits, the famine is their own fault. When it was not, right? it was because he was diverting supplies. This comparison, of course, was racist. And it was also speciesist. Let me explain how. So the mechanism of such comparisons, of comparing certain groups of human beings to non-human animals works as follows. Oppressors create a hierarchy of moral worth in which they place non-human animals right at the very bottom, right? And when they want to oppress certain groups of human beings, they place those human beings at an equal level in the moral hierarchy to those non-human animals. And by placing those human beings as equal to those non-human animals which they have presumed to be at the very bottom, they assign a lower moral worth to those human beings as well. Now such a moral hierarchy is of course completely irrational and we have to grow out of this moral hierarchy that oppressors throughout history have used. Now, when most people try to grow out of this hierarchy as defined by the oppressors, they start debating whether or not certain groups of human beings are equal to non-human animals. Right? They, they say that no, certain groups of human beings are not morally equal to non-human animals, but non-human animals are indeed at the bottom of the moral hierarchy. This is the wrong approach. When we do this, we are looking for our place in the hierarchy of the oppressors when what we should be doing is recognizing that the hierarchy is a false one. If a comparison is made between human beings or some human beings and non-human animals where non-human animals are not presumed to be of lower moral worth, that should not offend us. If it does, we are stuck in the debate as defined by the oppressors. When animal rights activists use such comparisons, it is quite the opposite. They are not lowering anyone's moral worth. They recognize the correct moral worth of human beings and they try to make people realize that non-human animals too have a higher moral worth than what we have assigned to them. At the very least, they have a moral worth 
which is higher than our temporary acceleration. It may be higher than that, and it is probably far higher than that, but that's the very least, right? Oh, by the way, if you're finding this video insightful, a sub to the channel would be fantastic. It really helps out a small channel like mine out. Anyway, let's proceed. I would also like to address two most popular uses of such comparisons by animal rights activists, which is comparing the current exploitation of non-human animals to the Holocaust and to slavery. Okay, so Holocaust. Holocaust has a general definition, which is slaughter on a mass scale, right? But in popular usage, the word Holocaust refers to the despicable crime of the Nazis in which they killed 6 million Jews and 17 million people altogether, right? It is one of the most horrifying crimes against human beings to have ever taken place. No doubt about it. The word is, however, not just limited to referring to what the Nazis did. Remember that famine I told you about that was created by a matter of written British policy in which 3 to 4 million people died? Well, it turns out that was not the only famine that was created by written British policy. It was not the only famine that was created by diverting supplies from India to Britain, right? There were numerous such famines created by the British in India, right? And the total number of Indians who died as a consequence of those British-induced famines is between 30 to 35 million. 30 to 35 million. Think about that number. Dr. Shashi Tharoor, who is a member of parliament or MP in India, writes in his book, An Era of Darkness, that this can only be described as the British colonial holocaust. And I agree. I can't think of any word that better describes what happened in India at the hands of the British. Now I want you to ask yourself this. Does it offend you that I call that a holocaust? Does it offend you at all? Would it offend you if I compared what the British did in India to what the Nazis did in Europe? It would not, right? At least I hope not. What would you think of a person who gets offended by such a comparison? Who says, how dare you compare Jews to Indians? I know killing Indians is wrong, right? But how dare you compare Jews to Indians? That is anti-Semitic. What would you think of such a person? Is this person racist? I submit to you that they are. Some people have a habit of responding to this argument by saying, no, 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 the problem is that the Nazis specifically equated Jews to animals, right? And by making these comparisons, again, we're playing into Nazi propaganda. No, we're not. Imagine for a moment, had the Nazis said something like, Jews are like Indians, therefore it is okay and needed to kill them. If the Nazis had said that hypothetically, right, would you now be offended by a comparison between Jews and Indians? Well, I hope not. So that cannot be an argument against what I'm saying here. Another lesser known fact about the colonization of India by the British Empire is that Indians were enslaved by the British Empire. And a lot of people don't know this. And I think the reason is that this enslavement that went on was very rarely referred to as enslavement. It was instead referred to as forced recruitment. Okay? But it was enslavement. Now, does it offend you at all that I call that an enslavement? When it was enslavement. What would you think of a person who came up to me and said, Oi, how dare you compare the suffering of Africans, of black people, to the suffering of Indians. How dare you compare black people to Indians? They are not the same. And, and, it's, and you're being racist to black people by comparing them to Indians. What would you think of such a person? 
is that person racist and bigoted against Indians because they cannot stand a comparison between black people and Indians. I submit to you that they are, right? And by not using these terms, right, uh, not using the term British colonial holocaust more frequently to refer to what the British did in India when they killed 30 to 35 million Indians by not using the term slavery when referring to the enslavement of Indians. Most people are simply unaware of these horrifying atrocities that were committed in India by the British Empire. Most of the Western world is completely unaware of this. And you'll be surprised to know that even most Indians are unaware of this, at least in my experience to the people that I've talked to. The American historian William James Durand, who was writing in the 1930s, wrote that the conscious and deliberate bleeding of India by the British Empire was perhaps the greatest crime in all of history. So by the use of soft language, by not using the correct terms, right, the colonization of India, which is perhaps one of the worst crimes against human beings to ever have been committed, was turned into a joke. And for this reason, what is currently going on to non-human animals needs to be addressed and referred to correctly. Okay? You don't have to call it a holocaust if you don't want to. I'll never demand that people use certain language and certain words. But remember that it is not inaccurate to call it a holocaust. That it is not inaccurate to refer to it as slavery or enslavement. Because that's exactly what is going on. We kill 73 billion land animals every single year. Right? And we kill trillions of marine animals and land animals put together. We kill trillions of them every single year. This is a holocaust. We hold uh, certain mammals captive, right? We, we exploit their reproductive system, steal their babies away and take their milk. This is enslavement, right? By not referring to these acts as what they are, we turn them into a joke when they're not. They're, they're perhaps the worst crimes to have ever taken place. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching this video, especially to my patrons on Patreon, who by the way, voted for the topic of this video. If you'd like to do that too, be sure to check that out. There are other benefits as well, starting from just a dollar a month. And while the website says per YouTube video, you will have the option to limiting your patronage to just once a month. So if you choose the $1 membership, you will not be paying me $1 per YouTube video, you will be paying me $1 a month and that's it. So be sure to check that out. It's the first link in the description. You can also follow me on social media here and especially on Instagram where I share my more candid thoughts, right? Mostly in the form of reels. So be sure to check that out. The links are in the description. If you aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps the channel out, right? And be sure to leave a like and also let me know what your thoughts are if you agree if you disagree that's fine i'll be in the comment section for a while after publishing this video and we can have some discussions there so don't shy away from leaving a comment right and with that i've been aditya prakash or soy theist and i'll see you in the next video